Amen. Good morning. Good morning, family. And thank you for sharing with us again. This is an opportunity that me as Pastor David Lee can come and share with you on this Good Morning Glory. Uh, we are grateful for the privilege again to meet with you on this Saturday morning. I'm hoping that you have had a blessed week. And if you haven't, amen. Start counting your blessings. Start counting the days that you have had some positive days and, and disregard the negative days. Focus on that which is positive and give God the blessings. We are reaching the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, it's a blessing for me to come to share with you on this Friday morning as we prepare to go to do the work of the Lord. Uh, today is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be exceedingly glad. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Anywhere God is at, God is present at. We are very thankful for and grateful for. Good morning to, to, to Tawana. Hey, good to hear your voice and see you. Tawana Frazier, bless you. Good to see you logging log, log on and being a part of this journey. Again, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for all of those who've been sending in your questions and being a part of uh, uh, questions and answers with the pastor. I see you, Sister Thelma Spakes. Thank you for logging in. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Uh, one of our two of our great family members, and we are grateful for them to share, and many others are down in. But let me just also say it's, it's a privilege for me to uh, take a moment to share with you in this uh, way of technology, way of listeners, uh, to ask a question to the pastor, and we are very grateful for that. We encourage you to continue to send your questions in, and uh, it doesn't matter what kind of question it is, we will try to answer those from a biblical perspective. Uh, that's our objective. Uh, it is not to try to uh, make anyone change, but also give them directions. Uh, not only make them change, but give them directions on what God is asking, what God is inquiring of. Uh, good morning, Sister Rose. I know we got a full day coming up on us. Um, but we give them, I want to ask some questions with, uh, with the pastor and uh, look at the biblical perspective and talk about what is God required of us and give some straight talk, some real talk. One of the questions came in that uh, was shared with us is, my child is not living a life that pleasing God. What do I do? The question again, my child is not living a life pleasing to God. What do I do? I'm sure everyone who's listening and everyone who's watching have had one day or time or two some challenges with their children, uh, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, uh, cousins, or um, family members. And, and sometimes life can bring a change that um, is a challenge in all of our lives. You know, all of us struggle. There is, let me just share this and then I'm going to give you a scripture, something to look at to consider. Uh, in my personal life, we from a family of large over 10 of us growing up. Uh, my mother and my father raised uh, all 10 of us, seven boys, three girls. And uh, we never had a born moment. It was always live in the house. You know how when you get kids together, uh, we would do cartwheels on the floor, cartwheels over the furniture. But we weren't allowed to do that in, in the presence of our parents. There was something they taught us, uh, and, and I want to share this because I want to share my personal experience. I think hopefully it'll be helpful for somebody else. You have to take your child from the day of birth, actually before they are born. You guys speak life into them before they are born. You guys speak the positive before they are born. You got to allow them to listen and be in an environment that is a respect and honor to God. And that's something that we were raised with. How to honor God, how to honor our parents, how to be respectful to others. And that's something that starts way at the birth of a child and raising them. Proverbs uh, 22 and 6 talked about training up a child in the way he should go. And, and when he is old, he will not depart from him. There has to be an ongoing training at an early stage. Yes. They will become of an age where they have their own mind, their own desires, their own will to do things differently. All we got to do as a parent is to lay the tracks, lay the foundation that they may have a life of Christ and the fear of God and, and, and God within their heart, and within their mind, and in their soul. The other thing you have to do uh, that our parents did, we couldn't go to everybody's house. We couldn't hang out with a whole lot of people. Uh, that did not have the same belief or the same teachings. 
uh, and that's something very important. Uh, we couldn't hang out at everyone's home. Even I had some cousins, some first cousins, that we couldn't hang at their home because they didn't, they, they didn't walk the same way that my mom and dad was trying to raise us. And I'm forever grateful uh, to be where I am now because uh, there was a blanket, uh, there was a covering, uh, I had praying parents, and so the person who's uh, right to question may be a praying parent, I don't know, may be a person who loved God. There are times that not all of us, even as all 10 of us, was raised in a perfectly godly home uh, that uh, the family that feared the Lord, not all perfect, but fear the Lord, not all of us went the same direction. Not all of us got on track right, but there was something that we did have. We respected God, we respected family, and then also we respected what our parents have taught us. Even today, we are blessed. My mom is 86 years old, my dad is 93 years old. To have 10 children, three sons, uh, three, three sons are gone to be with the Lord, but to still have seven of us living and still afford to have both parents still living, mom and dad, we are blessed. We're blessed because they lay the foundation of giving God the, the best of their service and giving God what God is need and sharing in that area. So I, I say the train of the child, uh, what do I do when a child goes astray? First thing I can say, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Keep trusting the Lord. The same God who heard you yesterday is the same God who will hear you today. And he'll be the same God who will hear you on tomorrow. Number one, eight, uh, Luke 18 and 1. Pray without faith. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying for them. Even if they go astray worse and get mad and evil and, and, and mean, don't stop praying for them because God can change people. Amen. Sometimes God can change people better than we can change. Matter of fact, I know he can change people better than we can. We can set the groundwork work by trusting God, leaning on the Lord, lean not to our own understanding, but in all that ways acknowledge him with the Lord Jesus Christ and he shall direct our path. So my first suggestion to you, number one, don't start praying for your child. Amen. Your son, your daughter, doesn't matter who they are, no matter how old they become. Uh, I was at my dad's home uh, a year or so ago. Here he is, 90, 93, 96 years old. Here he is, 93 years old. Here he is now. I see him on his knees at 90 years old praying for his, for his children. And, you know, I think every, every parent have their own way, their own way of doing so. But I think you ought to always keep your child in prayer. So the answer to the question, what do I do uh, if my child is doing, doing things that are not pleasing with God, you got to talk to them about getting out of the environment. Get them back to the church. The environment is crucial today. There are more challenges today in our schools, in our communities, in homes. you got to get them out of the environment you got to get them to listen to different types of music. And if you can't, if they, if they grow, it's hard to go back and get them when they grow. Start it while they're young and don't wait until they get grown. But it's hard to get it while they are grown. But continue, you live and you do what you can to live upright before them. You do what you can to live a positive life before them. Amen. Good morning, Retina. Good morning, Mrs. 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 Mack. Good morning to you as well. Thank you so much for being a part and sharing my wife. And so... My suggestion to all of us, as people of God and people of the Lord, when our child goes astray, we never stop praying. Prayer changes things. Let me give you this final example. A man in the Bible by the name of Saul, who was cruel and mean and ugly and deceitful, done some strange and some crazy things. Matter of fact, he persecuted the church. And when a person persecuted the church, you know they are just mean, really mean people. But God can take meanness and turn some stuff around. You know when God met, the, when, the, when, when Saul met the Lord on the Damascus Road and then the light shined and shined upon him and he fell off the beast. God can change our life. God can change our way. Only the Lord can change some people. Some people, you got to, everybody had to turn over to the Lord. But, but, but God had to do a special work in some other people. Amen. And so if God can change Saul's life, and he become Paul, one of the greatest missionaries that God can ever call. Amen. God can change anybody. And don't ever give up on your child. Don't ever give up on your son, your daughter. You trust God. Sometimes we got to stand in the gap for others. We walk not by sight, but we walk by faith. Second question that came in was, 
about Bible and memorizing scriptures and what the best verse to have and their version to of the Bible to have or the purchase. Well, people read the Bible differently. Let me just let me just share this. Memorizing scriptures is okay, but knowing what the scripture is saying is far much better. I think what I would suggest to this person, a person who's asked, I want to memorize scripture. That's wonderful because people can quote scriptures but don't know what the scripture is really saying. My first suggestion is if you have a church home, if you have a pastor, I would sit down with him and talk with him, talk with them about the words that the Bible is to purchase. We use King James Version here at our church. But I also suggest to people, get you a New Living Bible, a Translation Bible, um, a Quest Bible, um, a New International Living Bible, where you can understand the word compared to two. Because in the King James Version, you're going to have a Greek, you have Hebrews, you have Arabic, you're going to have all kinds of different translations, as well as English. And if you don't get the right understandings of the words, you can miss something in that, in, in that area. And so when the Bible talked about Hebrews 11 and 1, and God would give you things in sundry time, the word sundry, people would look at the sundry and not understand what sundry means, which means parts, in parts. God doesn't give you everything at one time because we can't handle everything. So memorizing scriptures is memorized thing is a process of reading, writing, rereading, writing, rereading. Say it to yourself. If you want to memorize scriptures, write them down. Write down your path, a passage, a couple of verses. Don't try to write down the whole chapter, but write down a couple of verses. Go and repeat and write it on the wall. Put it on the wall. Put it on your refrigerator. Put it on your bathroom window. A place where you're going to go every time. And then say it to yourself, walk away, spend a few days just memorizing that. Take a second one. And then later that week, do another one. So you can be a part of that uh, uh, growing process of knowledge. And then use it. You only can retain something that you use regularly. Again, you only can contain something that you use regularly. If you just memorize it today and never use it again, you will lose part of that, 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 that which you have taken into your heart. And God will give back to you that which is in your heart and in your mind and within your soul. So let me suggest to those two persons or questions. Again, stay close to the Lord. Again, stay with God and watch God do great things for you. All of us is a, is a learning process. And so as you learn, encourage somebody else to learn. Again, the person who have a child that has some challenges, turn them over to the Lord. You got to trust God with them. I know you're going to have to cry. Crying ain't bad, but healing will come after crying. Crying ain't bad because sometimes it can be a midnight hour. It can be all kinds of things. It can be drugs. It can be crying. It could be just being just, just, uh, just evil and mean, verbals and words. It could be anything. It could be this person don't even do anything, uh, but just don't want to comply. Listen, God can do anything but fail. Trust in the Lord. Lean out to your own understanding. Keep praying. You stay in church. Stay close to God. And I know one thing. If you give them to the Lord, because God gave them to you, no greater person can talk to God about your child than yourself. You stay with God. Let them see your closeness with the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't argue with them. Don't fuss with them. Don't debate with them. Teach them. Love them. And let them know, instead of me arguing with you, I'm going to love you because you're my child. I may not like what you do, but I'm going to love you because you're my child. Why did I say that? Because Jesus Christ loved us, all of us. Why? Because he adopted us as his children, as his sons, as his daughters. He died that we may have life and that we may have life more abundantly. I'm grateful that someone looked beyond my faults and supplied my every need. And God can do it for me. And if God can do it for somebody else who's sitting next to you, surely God can do it for everybody. I, I devil dare you to try Jesus. Try the Lord. Watch him work it out. And then the memory vice the verses. Memory is one thing, but knowing knowledge is more powerful. Trust in the Lord, my brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Lee of the Guiding Star Baptist Church here in Kansas City. And I want to thank everyone who dialed in with questions 
and thoughts and share your messages. Share with somebody else. Let them know we walk by faith, not by sight. Let them know the memory of the scriptures is one thing, but having it in your heart is two different things. Memory of scripture, the quote of scripture, I hear people all the time quoting the scriptures, and I, sometimes they get it wrong. But listen, even though if you quote a scripture and get it wrong, the main thing is that you know the word of God in your heart, because sometimes we just don't get it all right. And let me just share this one piece you see in the book of Psalms all the time, the word Selah, S-E-L-I, wait, so you see the word Selah in the Bible. And when you see that word Selah in the Bible, you don't say that word. That word means pause, means takes a break. All right? Pastor Lee, thank you so much. We are grateful. Uh, thankful for my wife who can take, who could continue to conduct this program and a good morning glory. And I'm grateful for you dialing into her program. Continue to support her. Continue to support this ministry. And again, we are very grateful. I think she's over here. I think she wants to say something to you. Hello. Hello, everybody. See, every time I come on, she always want to bust in. That's okay. She can do that every now and then. Listen, y'all be blessed. Have a good weekend. I love you. We love you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.